You've now seen that leaving groups can be eliminated, as opposed to substituted, if they have adjacent hydrogens, resulting in alkenes. In the E1 elimination, this occurs when a weak base deprotonates the carbon next to a carbocation, which was formed from a leaving group just leaving. Elimination can occur by another mechanism as well, the E2 elimination. In the presence of a strong nucleophile, leaving groups can be displaced in SN2 reactions, and this was pretty understandable from a basic understanding of HOMOs and LUMOs. But strong nucleophiles can often act as strong bases as well, deprotonating molecules. But usually, as we learned in Chem 202, bases can only remove protons if they're relatively acidic, and a molecule like t-butyl chloride has no acidic protons. Their pKa's are upwards of 50. But if the strong base happens to encounter t-butyl chloride in a moment of weakness, it can deprotonate a hydrogen and kick out the chloride all at once, like this. This is a reaction that molecular orbital theory might never predict but MO theory can certainly help us to explain it. This reaction is called the E2 elimination because it involves both the electrophile, the molecule with the leaving group on it, and the base colliding in the rate determining step. That is, it's bimolecular. And it produces a double bond by removing a leaving group and a proton on the adjacent carbon, so it's an elimination. But not all compounds with good leaving groups and protons next door undergo this reaction. For instance, these compounds don't react with methoxide, while these do. The E2 elimination has a geometric or spatial requirement. The hydrogen that's being removed and the leaving group must be anti and periplanar. That is, they must be pointing exactly 180 degrees apart from each other and in the same plane. When in this particular reactive conformation, several important orbitals are all aligned in a way that allows the reaction to, to occur. From our curved arrows, we know that the base must donate into sigma star CH, which is a pretty terrible acceptor orbital. but if the corresponding CH sigma bond is aligned parallel with the adjacent sigma star CCL, which is a good acceptor orbital, then the bonding electrons can simultaneously donate into that acceptor orbital, breaking the CCL bond and forming a new pi bond in the process. This process requires a few things, a strong base, an available proton on the carbon adjacent to the one where the leaving group is attached, a good leaving group, and a little bit of luck that the two molecules collide in just the right anti-periplanar orientation. The strongly basic conditions mean that SN1 and E1 reactions don't typically compete, but SN2 reactions might also occur if the leaving group is primary. For example, when isobutyl bromide is treated with a compound that's a strong donor of electrons, either a nucleophile or base, we see a mixture of products, one from the SN2 substitution, the other from E2 elimination. We can favor one or the other by judicious choice of nucleophile or base. Very bulky bases, like T-butoxide, which aren't very good nucleophiles in SN2 reactions, can be used to favor the elimination if we wish. Conversely, some nucleophiles are pretty poor bases and tend to favor substitution. These include azide, cyanide, and thiolates.